Sing my word. I'm staying all along my pleasures of oh, sin. I'm staying all along with you. I made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. again are you sure born 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 again thank god i'm born again everybody say born 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 again thank god i'm born again born 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 again thank god i'm born again everybody say Do it one more time. Hey, hey, hey. Born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. Everybody say. Thank God I'm born again. Hey, hey, hey. Born of the water, spirit of the blood. Thank God I'm born again. Everybody say. Born of the water, spirit and the blood, thank God I'm born again. Everybody say. Born of the water, spirit and the blood, thank God I'm born again. Everybody say. I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday. Hallelujah! Are you having a good time? Oh, yes. Are you sure? Oh, yes. Can we dance some more? Can we dance some more? Are you ready to bless the name of the Lord? Shout glory! Bless your name, Almighty God. We bow before your throne. We bless your name, Almighty God. We bow before your Father. We bless, we bless your mighty God.
Worship the Lord in this place. Hey, worship the Lord in this place, for He is mighty in this place. Masanta raba shaka taraba sandelebo, riba shaka taraba sandeleba. Masanta riba sandeleba. Just lift those holy hands up to heaven. Just pour your heart out to Him. Oh, we glorify your name, O oh Jesus. For you are the ancient of days. Yesterday, today, you are the same. And you will never change. Masakatarabashandelebo Santaraba. We glorify your holy name. Masekateliba Shantalaba. Oh Maseketelebo Shante. Our hearts are your dwelling place, oh God. Rikeba Sandelebo Shakatalaba Santalaba. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. For you have never changed. You are the same today. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as strong as you are, you will never change. Never change. Patient of days, as long as you are, as strong as you are, you will never change. Patient. 
Now I want to hear just the voices. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as strong as you are, as strong as you are, you will never change God. change God you, you sound so beautiful patient of days as old as you are as strong as you are you will never change God Lord, you never change. Lord, you never change. Riba sonta rakando robo shente rebo uja reba santa rabo uja. Loba shinte rekando robo sonte reba sinte reko uja rebo uja. A covenant keeping card you are. O korobo shanta raba sinte reko uja rebo uja. We experience you every day, O God. Whatever you say in the word, Lord, that's what we see, O God. You are the covenant keeping Lord raba shente reko.
God, we still see your power every day. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. For you are unchanging, God. You are unchanging, God. You are unchanging, God. The God of Abraham. The God that sent Jesus for us. Thank you, Lord. We have seen all those promises. Lord, we saw you go. We saw you fulfilling, Lord. Lord, we see you, God, when we cling to your word. We see your power. We see you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. For God, you will forever be like this. Lord, you will forever be like this. Lord, you will never change. You are the God. You are the master. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. You created heavens and earth. Lord, you created us, O God. Lord, we thank you for we are part of it. Lord, thank you for you keep this covenant. Lord, we thank you because of you, you are unchanging, God. Lord, thank you you keep all these promises. Thank you, Master. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, dear Lord. Riba sota rebonja rebonja. Resunte rebonja resonte rebonja. Ribonja raba santa rebonja rebonja. Rikonja resunte rebonja raba santa rakonja. Thank you, Master. Raba sota rebonja raba sente rebonja. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, dear Lord. Hallelujah. It's time for prayer. We are thanking God for this wonderful opportunity that we have today. So we are praying in this line for the grace that we have today that we listen to the word, that God, should, that God will speak to our hearts today. So we are praying and thanking God for this. Rest lead, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. The word of the Lord says, The one who speaks in tongues advances his own spiritual progress, while the, while the one who prophesies builds up the church. So we are praying for ourselves, we are praying for those coming. We are praying for the service today. We will even prophesy for the service today. Hallelujah. So let's pray in this line. Let's pray. If you can speak in tongues, please do so. Riva sonta rikouja re sonte re bouja re sonde re bouja. Rakouja re basinte re kouja re bouja. Riva sonta rikouja re sonde re bousanta ra kouja re bouja re sonte. Sente riamando robo shonto robo unja rebo unja rekuje rebo shonto robo unja resunte rekuje rebo unja rikando roba sile riamando ro kuje rekan shonta la kuje le shonte le kuje rekuje le bu shanta le kuje rekuje le bu shonte le kuje resunte le ba sile le kuje resunte le kuje rekuje le shonta le kuje le shonta rekuje le shonte le kuje le shonta Recuja le sonde recuja le sonta rakando robo sinte recuja le sonde recuja thank you lord for this wonderful service today thank you master for the wonderful service riva sente rakando robo sinte recuja le bonja lord my heart is open for the service lord my heart is open oh god you can minister to me at every stage oh lord my heart is open my heart is open my heart is open my heart is is open. Rikouja resunte rekouja resunte rekouja rebo. Rikouja ria masinte rekouja. Risunte lekouja. Resunte lekouja. Resunte lekouja. Resunte lekouja. Resunte lekouja. Resunte ria masunte lekouja. Lebusha la basanta rekouja. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful service. 
Thank you, Lord. You are speaking to me. You are speaking to me. You are speaking to me. You are speaking to me today, oh God. You are speaking to me today. Lord, you are speaking to my neighbor. Lord, you are speaking to those streaming. Lord, you are speaking to those coming. Lord, this place is charged up. Our hearts are open for you. Our hearts are open for you. Our hearts are open for you. Rikujereba Santa Recoja, Risunta Recuja, the Santa Recoja, Rika Santa Recoja, the Santa Recuja, the Bonja. Thank you, Lord, for my heart is a good soil, Roca. Rikuja Santa Recoja, the seed you are planting today is germinating. Riva Santa Recoja, the Bonja is giving out fruits, is giving out fruits. Resunta Recoja, Resunta Recoja, Resanta Recoja, Reboja. Thank you, Lord. Everyone coming is not going back the same. Lord, we are all getting, we are all getting whatever we need. We are getting our desires, oh God. Oh, Rabba Santa Recoja, Recoja, Resunta, Lecoja, Lesunta, Resunta, Lecuja, Lesunta, Lebuja, Riva Sunta, Lecuja, Resunta, Liva Santa, Lecoja, Lebuja, O Corobo Santa, Reva Santa, Reca Sinta, Rebuja, Reca Sunta, Lecoja, Recoja, Lesunta, Lecoja, Lebuja, Resunta, Lecuja, Lesunta, Lecoja, Resunta, Lebuja, Lecoja, Lebuja, Rekija. Rabasinaria Masonte de Goja Lebuja, Rica Santa Lecoja, Ricoja Le Santa Lecoja Lebuja, Resunta Leva Santa Lecoja Lebuja, Ricando Robo Santa Lecoja Lebo Santa Lecoja, Rica Sinta Rebuja, Rica Santa Lebuja, Rica Santa Lecoja, Reca Santa Lecoja, Reca Santa Lebuja, Le Santa Lecoja, Resunta Lecoja, Le Santa Lecoja. Thank you, Master. Reba Santa Raba Santa Recoja Rebuja, Re Santa Recoja, Re Santa Lecoja, Le Santa Lebuja, Ricoja Leva Santa Lecoja Lebuja, Riva Santa Liama Santa, Ricando Robo Santa Lecoja Le Santa, Riva Santa Lecoja Leva Santa Lecoja Leva Santa, Ricoja Leva Santa, Ricoja Le Santa Lecoja Le Santa, Recoja Le Santa Lecoja Le Santa, Re Santa Lecoja Le Santa. Santa Lebuja, Riva Santa Lecoja, O Rabba Santa Recoja, Re Santa Recoja, Reba Santa Recoja, Lebuja, Robo Santo Robuja, Recoja, Reba Santa Recoja, Rebuja, Riva Uja, Ra Santa Recoja, Rebuja, Rabba Santa Recoja, Le Santa Lecoja, Rabba Santa Lebuja, Riva Santa Recoja, Lebuja. Rokoja Rabba Santa Rekoja Reboja. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your praises. Thank you for your praises. Rabba Sunde Reba Sinde Rekoja Reboja. Rikando Robo Sonte Reboja Rabba Santa Rekoja. No one is going back the same. Lord, we are going back, Lord, with whatever you have prepared for us. Lord, thank you for our good packages. Thank you for the hefty packages, O oh Lord. Thank you for these packages. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Our hearts are open. Our hearts are open. Our hearts are open, O oh Lord. All of us, our hearts are open. Our hearts are open, Lord. Our hearts are open. Our hearts are open, Lord. Our hearts are open. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for this grace, Lord, to receive your word, O Lord. We thank you, dear Master. We thank you, our dear Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Rava sonda la kuja resonte rekuja. Rakuja rava sente rekuja rekuja. Rabba Santa Recoja Revoja Riba Sonte Recoja Revoja. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, dear Lord. Let's pray. As, as Christians, uh, what we should know is whenever we pray, 
you get the answers. You get the desired answers. And what requires only is faith. So we are praying to the Lord for whatever we need. Whatever we need as the next step in our lives. We are praying with that faith. So let's read Mark 11, verse 23 to 24. See what the Lord said. Jesus said, listen to the truth I speak to you. This was the emphasis. Listen to the truth that I speak to you. So let's listen. If someone says to this mountain with great faith, and have no doubt, mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the midst of the sea, and believes that what he says will happen, it will be done. This is the reason I urge you to boldly believe for whatever you ask in prayer. Be convinced that you have received it and it will be yours. This was the Lord. He was challenging us that if, if we have great faith, we can speak to the mountain. You mountain, move into the midst of the sea and it will happen. And he gave us the condition that that can only happen if we have faith. So we are praying fervently for whatever we lack in our lives with such great faith, believing that it's not us to do it, but it's the Lord in heaven to do it. So let's pray for whatever we desire in our lives. Let's pray even for our neighbors. Whosoever is lacking something, if you have that in your mind, let's keep them in prayer. Let's begin to pray. Riba soon de reco uja resonta reba santa reco uja rebo uja recando robo son to roco uja resonte rebo shanta rabo uja racando robo son te reco uja resonte rebo uja la santa raco uja lebo uja riba sin de reco uja la santa leco uja resunde le cuja le santa lebo uja resunte le cuja le santa lebo uja recuja reba santa rabo uja resonta le cuja recando Santa Rabo Santa Santa La Cuja Rebo Uja La Bas Santa Oco Rabo Santa Rebo Uja Re Santa Rebo Uja Riba Santa Le Cuja Le Santa La Cuja Le Bo Uja Riba Uja Re Santa Re Ama Santa Re Cuja Santa Re Cuja Santa Re Cuja Santa Re Cuja Le Santa Re Cuja Santa Le Cuja Le Santa Rica Santa Reba Rico Uja Re Santa Raba Santa La Cuja Re Bo Uja Rico Uja Santa Rakuja Reba Santa Rebonja Rekuja Leva Santa Rebonja Rekuja Leva Santa Rekonja Rekuja Leva Santa Rebonja Lesunta Rekonja Lord you are saying in the book of Mark from this from chapter 11 from verse 23 to 24 Raka Sonda La Kuja Reba Sinde Le Kuja Riku Shanti Yama Santa Rakonja Rebonja Rikonja Raba Santa Rekonja Thank you for the promise O God Thank you for this promise O God Lord we have this faith we have the great faith. Rakando la basile le conja. We have the great faith as a church. We have the great faith as our FP. Lord, we have desires as our FP. We have desires as individuals. We have desires as your children, Lord. We have desires, Master. Rakando la basile le conja, le conja. Riba sinde le conja, le conja. We have desires as a nation. Ri conja, raba santa, le conja. Rikonja resunta le conja, recuja reba sinta reba santa ra conja, riku sinta ria ma santa, rakom santa ra ba santa ra ka, rako shine ria ma santa re conja re conja, ora ba santa ra ba, o koro ba santa ra ba, reka sunda le conja, risunda le conja santa re conja, resunda le conja le santa le conja, resunda le conja le santa le conja. Lord, I pray for my neighbor. Lord, I pray for the job, for the job he desires, the job she desires. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus now, O Lord. Reka sunda le kujareba, re sunda le kujare santa le 
unja. Lord, he's getting it now, oh God. He's getting it now, oh master. He's getting it now, oh master. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, master, for your presence. Thank you, Master, for your presence. Raka Santa, Rakuja, Rebonja, Resunda, Lakuja, Lesunta, Lakoja. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that the business that He needs, the business She needs, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, we hold hands as a church. We hold hands as a church and pray for this brother. We pray for this sister. We pray, Lord, for this one. Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, he's getting it. He's getting it now, O oh God. Lord, you are making a way. 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 You are making a way now, O oh God. You are making a way, O oh Master. Raka sonta rabuja, rasonta rakoja, resunte lebuja, rabasanta rekoja, riku shantiria masonta lekoja, resunte lekuja, lesonte lekoja, rika santa rekoja, reboja, rekuja rebasinte rekuja. Rivushanta riva sonta rekoja resunde lekuja le sonta. Thank you, Lord, for the targets as a ministry. Our targets as a ministry. Riva sonta rebonja rekuja resunte lekoja resinte reva sonta lekoja rekuja resunte rekuja raba santa rekoja rekuja raba sonta rekoja rekuja reva sonta rebonja rekuja le sonta lekoja lebonja. Riva sente reconja, recuja le sunte le conja, le sonte le conja, reca sonte le conja, le sonte le buja, la basanta le conja, o corobo sonte le buja, o caria masonda, reca sinte le conja, le sonte le buja, rica sunte le conja, le sonte le buja. Lord, thank you, Lord, Lord, thank you, Lord. Riva sente le conja, you never change you, you never change, Lord. Thank you, you have heard. Us. Thank you. You keep the promises. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Master, for this. We thank you as a minister. We thank you as the brother. We thank you as the sister, Lord. We thank you, Lord, as a nation. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, dear Lord. Finally, we always pray for a man of God. Today we will get that best message, that best package from the Lord. It's coming for us. So we pray for a man of God. That is his whatever, whatever the Lord has put in him for us. We should see them. We should capture them in the spirit. There shouldn't be any disturbance. We should capture them. We should walk with them. We should see the fruits. So we pray for a man of God. He should speak that in boldness. He should deliver everything that the Lord has given for us through him. Let's read Proverbs 8 from verse 10 to 11. Choose my instruction, love a silver, and knowledge, love a pure God, for wisdom is far more variable than rubbish. Nothing you desire can compare with it. So we are praying also in line that we, we, when we are praying for a man of God, we are praying that he should speak that wisdom of God, that wisdom, whatever the Lord has put in him. So we are praying for all of that, that we should see, we should see, we should capture in the spirit. So let's pray. Let's pray. Rava son de rebuja reson te rekoja. Rakando robo son de rebuja reson te rebuja reson te rebuja. Rakuja reba sin de rebuja reson te rebuja. Rikando robo son to rokoja reson te rekoja. Riba son te rebo shanta rebuja reson te rebuja. Rikando robo sin te rekuja reson te rekoja. Rekuja reson te rekoja le sonta. Rekuja 
rouge le sont le rouge le sont le rouge le sont le rouge le sont rica sonde le rouge le basanta le rouge rebasinde rebasanta le rouge thank you for the word of wisdom you have put in our man of god pastor opre oh lord in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ lord our hearts are open lord our hearts are open our minds are open lord we are ready oh god we are ready to receive your word we are ready to receive your word we are ready to receive your word oh lord lord we pray in the name of jesus christ that lord we capture everything that lord you have prepared for us lord we pray in jesus christ mighty name we pray for this environment lord we pray in the name of jesus christ we pray for your power oh lord lord that we understand oh god lord we understand oh lord that lord we capture oh god that lord we go back with this oh god and practice oh god and enjoy your life oh god in jesus christ mighty name rakuja rasonta le kuja le boja resunde le kuja le sunde le boja resonta le basanta le kuja ribasile le ama sonta le kuja le boja thank you dear lord thank you dear lord thank you dear lord thank you dear lord ribando lo bosonte le kuja le boja ribasonte le kuja le boja in jesus christ Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you as a church for this wonderful time. Lord, thank you for whatever we prayed, O oh Lord, that, Lord, we see this as a ministry. We see these as individuals, Lord. We thank you because, Lord, you are covenant-keeping God. Thank you, Lord, because you have heard each one of us. You said it, Lord, and, Lord, we see this happening, O oh God, in our lives every day. Thank you, Master, for this. In Jesus' name we pray and we bless your name. Amen. the opportunity to stand in front of you in time of intercession. Thank you very much. Welcome you all to this afternoon service. And first of all, before I start giving you announcement, I'd like to thank my man of God, Pastor Aubrey, and the branch pastor, Pastor Beatrice, for awarding me this opportunity. And you did great to come. Make sure you're going to pay attention and listen attentively, light notes where necessary. 2020 Financial Success Conference and Mid-Year Thanksgiving Service. So the leadership is pleased to inform you that we we'll hold our 2020 Financial Success Conference at the end of the month of July. The 2020 prestigious Financial Success Conference has been divinely orchestrated by the Spirit to lightly position and catapult us to greater levels of breaking new grounds. So the details for this service is as follows. So it is going to be the end month of July on the 30th and 31st, and it will go on to 1st of August 2020, and it's going to run from 5.30 p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m., right here in the Dawn Auditorium. So all those who are outside Blantyre are going to stream live from their like, respective Blanche venues. So Global Media Thanksgiving Service, as the Spirit instructed us several years ago, every media we take special time to appreciate and thank God for what he has done in the first half of the year in the ministry at large, and also in the lives of individual members. We will prayerfully and in worship thank God for every new ground we have broken. In giving thanks, we are going to give our thanksgiving seed to express our gratitude for what God has done. 
Finally, we will pray and prophesy concerning the second half of the year. The details will be on the 2nd August 2020. It's going to be from 1 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. So take note of the time, 1 p.m. to 4.30. It will be right here in the Dawn Auditorium. All Blanches will meet in their respective venues and stream most part of the service. Note on Thanksgiving seed. You, your Thanksgiving seed for the Thanksgiving service can either be monetary or in kind. So for all monetary seeds, as usual, we encourage you to deposit in the following bank accounts and bring deposit slip during the services. One, National Bank of Malawi, the account name redeemed for People's Ministries, account number 1001394. Four two, and the branch is Henderson Street. It's a current account, or you can use mobile accounts. Airtel Money zero double nine seven three zero three two seven zero, or Mpamba. You can use zero triple eight five nine eight seven eight four. The above are all recommended accounts. Details of other RF bank accounts like NBS Bank, Eco Bank can be obtained from the Global Finance Office. Wedding announcement. The Samuti and Chimbe families are pleased to announce the wedding ceremony of their beloved children, Kezo and Misozi. The two are from RFP Lirongwe Blanche and their wedding will be officiated by Pastor Aubrey on 8th August 2020, and it will be at Game Heavens Lodge on the lakeside from 4 p.m. till... And cocktail is going to land from 5 o'clock hours at the same venue. This wedding is strictly by card invitation. So if you've been given a card, you'll be allowed to go. Otherwise, let's just celebrate with them as they are tying a knot. Reminders. All leaders visual training with Pastor Aubrey. So this morning, we finished the second part of the training on the concept of necessary sacrifice by our man of God, Pastor Aubrey. We started it previously, and the second part was done this morning. The leadership would therefore like to thank all the leaders who participated in all the services, where maybe you did not manage to participate or during the first time, please be feel free to contact me or Pastor Mpazo. And if you only attended the today's session, also contact me or Pastor Mpazo for further logistics. In the same line, over the week, all the people, all the leaders who have participated in this event will be required to just give a brief ways about what they have learned in regard to that one. So we're going to notify you on the logistics regarding that. Midweek service, be reminded that we still hold the midweek services every Thursday from 5.30 p.m. till 7.30 p.m right here at the KCA, and you'll be wise to come because transport is always available after the service. And on giving, if you've brought, deposited, or transferred any special seeds, such as tithe, Thanksgiving seed, KCA givings, or any general seed to the ministry, please ask for an envelope if you did not collect it as you are coming in the auditorium, which the envelope is going to have a slip where you're going to fill in the details of your giving. If you don't have an envelope, you may raise your hand now and collect the envelope. Otherwise, thank you for listening. This marks the end of the announcement. Enjoy the rest of the service. Praise the Lord. 
It's another beautiful moment that we're supposed to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just stand up on your feet. Lift those beautiful hands towards heaven. Just thank God on how beautiful he is over your life. On how great he has been over everything that you've been passing through. Over your family, over your job, over everything that concerns you. Man, talabasha, talabasoligade, ratalabasom terigade, man, takarabasha, talabai. Oh, we thank you, O oh Lord. We welcome you into this place, O oh Lord. We open our hearts to you, O oh Lord. Receive our praise this afternoon. Receive our praise in the name of Jesus. You alone are God. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Makasha katalaba sodigade, rakatalaba sonte digade, mantarabai, roturubo shatalaba baba baba salada, radada da 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 salada. Mighty God, I bless your name, holy one, I worship you. For you are God all by yourself. Come on, just worship Him. Mm -hmm. You are God all by yourself. It's too late. You see here the same. Shout your name for you are God all by yourself. Hey, you are God all by yourself. Woo. For who you are, I bless your name. change your God. All creation will shout your name. Thank you. 
Just worship him in your own words, in your own song, in your own words. You are, you have been, you will forever remain God. Oh, you are God by yourself, oh Lord. We bless your name in this place, O God. Oh, we lift our hearts to you, O Lord. We lift our hearts to you, O God. Oh, Worship him, precious Jesus. See you alone, you alone, you alone, Lord, you are worthy, you are worthy, you're worthy oh, my praise. Hey, you alone, you alone, you alone, you alone. Oh, my praise. For you, Lord, 
Oh, we love you. We love you, oh God. You have never failed before. You cannot fail us, oh God. You are still able. You will forever be able. You are able, Lord, you are able, Woo! yes, by your word, I stand unshakable, I testify, oh God, 
that you are able. My God, you're able. Lord, you are able. Hey. By your words, I stand and I testify that you are able. Exceeding upon at least much more than I could ever think. Exceedingly upon at least you are able to do a sufficient. Come on, quiet, just join. You are able. You are able. By your word. I stand and testify, oh Lord. That you are able, oh God. Oh, you are able to do exceedingly, exceedingly.
Oh, how we love you, oh Lord. How we love you, oh God. Oh, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right, why not wave at someone sitting close by as you take your seats? Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You love being in church. Shout it out loud. Say, I love coming to church. And you devil, you can do nothing about it. I know what church means. I know what church does. That's why I come to church regardless. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when you hear that other people have stopped going to church, you know, there's been a lot of people asking me, Pastor, are people still coming at your church? I said, what do you think? I said, they will come and they'll keep coming. Actually, I think they should come even more at such a time as this. Isn't it? You know what? Let, let's, the Bible says, lest the devil should take the advantage over us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. And so the devil wakes us. Wakes uh, that lady that killed that army commander. Uh, I think that army commander was Cicera or, or someone. The way that lady killed her. The man was running from war, from battle. And that lady said, you know what? Come and hide. Come in this tent. Hide. And then he came. He said, don't just hide. You should also take some milk. And then the man said, okay, okay, okay. Milk. Then the lady said, I'm hiding you. I'm hiding you. Then I'm not just hiding you. I'm even giving you extras. Milk. Then after the milk, he says, you know what? Lie down here and have a peaceful sleep. And the Bible says, whilst this man slept, the same lady came with a nail and a hammer and then phew, killed that same man. The Bible says, whilst men slept, the but then. You see, don't allow the, the, the environment to make you to take certain decisions that you could not have naturally taken. That coronavirus you are running away from, then you say, I'm going to hide in the tent, and then I'm going to do the next thing, then the next thing, and then you're becoming spiritually weaker. You're becoming spiritually weaker. Right in that tent where you are hiding, and the tent could just be the mask. Right in the tent where you are hiding. There, when it comes to the time of that nail and the hammer, you now don't have the strength to, to, to overcome it. You don't have the strength to resist it. You know, it's always good that no matter what happens, your spiritual life, keep it aflame. Are, are you following? Anything can happen around you. But as long as your spiritual life is in order, you can bounce back into anything. It's, far, it's another thing for your finances not to be in order. It's not as disastrous. It's fine for other things around you to be breaking apart. It's not as disastrous. But for your spiritual life to be breaking apart, that's danger. That's a red flag. So you don't allow yourself to, to, to hide in the pretense of, I am hiding at home. And you see, you'll be fooling yourself. As you're hiding at home, you'll be encouraging yourself. You know what? I will still stream the same, but you won't stream it the same way. You, won't, you may not even stream it or a visitor may come. Because it's all of these. The devil is well strategized. He's, he's, he's even going to send a relative. And that relative is coming from South Africa. 
you were escaping from people like us that haven't traveled. The one that comes to chat with you. And now you can't, you can't stream because that one is chatting with you. Story after story, you have missed says, How many of you have ever lied to yourself that as I'm at home, I will stream and then you found out you didn't stream well? How many have ever had those scenarios before? Many, isn't it? It happens. I will stream, I will stream. Then somehow you don't stream. Or you stream whilst doing many other things. What's multitasking? You multitask God. Here, you can't multitask because you're looking at you. But at home, you can multitask. Like you can multitask God and some funny videos. You can just, you can just do multitasking. You could even be dancing. Well, then you listen to one or two verses. Then you go back to another thing. And then you're eating. Whilst you are listening to a preaching. You even take the preaching to the toilet. You see, all these things. And you think that it will be as effective? Tell your neighbor, always come to church. Ah, ah, shout glory! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know that? Do you know that for me, actually, I think from, uh, if, if, if I remember so well, I think from the year 2007 up to today, I think I've only missed one church service from 2007. No, no, I also didn't miss. I attended partially. I think so. Yes. But look at it from 2007. I've never missed church service. Even when I'm not teaching, I'm going to go to church. From 2007, how many years is that? I've never missed even one single service. There has never been something important. And then I'll miss. A, no, it's not, it's not a good discipline. Are you there? All right, we are starting on a utopic today. And this topic is healing, health, and wholeness. Healing, health, and wholeness. And boy, am I excited to share with you on this uh, particular uh, topic. Just a quick emphasis. It has been announced times without number. What are we starting to do from tomorrow? We are fasting, isn't it? From tomorrow, we are fasting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The fast starts at midnight. So it starts at today, midnight. You finish at 4 p.m. every day. And then on Thursday, it starts at midnight and runs all the way through Friday into midnight on Friday. It's a 24-hour fast on Friday. So you come to the prayers, hear the global prayers. At 6 p.m., you come whilst fasting. Okay? Is that good? But make sure you create time to pray. Don't just a hunger strike through the day. Yeah? Healing health and wholeness. Now, let's start by looking at, now I know, if you are to tackle on the subject, the most popular aspect of it which is actually the lesser, is the healing part. So, people are more familiar with the healing part. And there's so much we can talk about the healing part. It's the least, but also most famous. Okay? Because that's where people are more acquainted with. Okay? So, I'll tackle that one as last. Health is actually what is more important very connected to the healing, but more important, it's a higher level. And even a higher level is called wholeness. It's called wholeness. And what God did that, because you see, I, I, I like to study the Bible and not only look at, you know, some things that we ought to have. But I like to go backwards to look at God's original plan. You see, whenever you look at God's original plan, it, it really helps you very well. As opposed to looking at the repaired version of something. Because there are certain things that were repaired by God. And the Bible shows us so. They were fixed. They were repaired. Okay? 
There was a way that they should have functioned, and then they didn't go that way, and then God had to repair them. Okay? But it's always good to look at what was God's original plan on a particular matter. And Hornets becomes just that. The book of Thessalonians, chapter number 5, and verse 23. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, and verse 23. Maybe let me have you to write this down. Write down that wholeness, wholeness means the state of being perfectly well. Wholeness means the state of being perfectly well in body, soul, and spirit. The state of being perfectly well in body, soul, and spirit. And you, you should know, soul comprises of three parts, three elements, isn't it? That is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So we're talking about the state of being perfectly well in body, in soul, soul meaning your mind, your will, and your emotions, and then also in spirit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. The Bible says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. So he says, to sanctify you wholly. Sanctify you wholly in whole. Not a part of you, but wholly. And I pray God, your whole, you see, he says your whole, spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he, he tells us there of, he says, your spirit, your soul, and then your body. And wholeness is a state where all of these three are functioning perfectly well. And I would like to start from there and shed a bit more light from Scripture. Genesis chapter number 2 and verse 7. The, okay, maybe let's, maybe let's do it. Let's not rush too much. I want you to read this after me. Can you see pro probably from the back there? Okay. Now, oh, let me read it. The Bible says, but the Bible shows us, and I want you to observe it. It's a very famous scripture. You know it very well, but still observe it. The Bible says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. God formed man. What is he talking about? He's talking about the body, the physical body. He formed it from the ground. Okay? Then he says, Does the Bible put a full stop? No. The same verse, he formed man of the ground. The next thing he would do, he says, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. What is he talking about? He would put his spirit into that body that he formed. Remember, in Genesis chapter number one, God had already created man in his own image and in his likeness. Where was man? Man was still in God. But God had created him. Then God now makes a body. So why is he breathing into the body? Because he wants to release the man that is in him, the one that he created. He wants to release him into this body. So he breathes uh, man into, the, the spirit of man into this body. And in the Bible tells us that man becomes a living soul. He becomes alive, but also he now also now possesses what we'd call a soul. And as I said, soul here, we, soul would many, in, would, in the Bible many times also refer to spirit. But it still shows us that now man a spirit. He now has a physical body. He now also has a soul. These three, the way that the Bible shows us here, is that they have been put as a system. They have been intertwined by God in a particular way. 
to the end that in God's perfect plan, if man is to function well, these three must together function well. The body must function well. The spirit must function well. The soul must function well. It's not that you say that, okay, I can ignore my, my soul. As long as my body and my spirit are going well, then that's fine. Someone says, I'm going to focus on my body. I don't care about my spirit. I don't care about my soul. Or another one that says, I'm going to only take care of my soul. I don't care about my spirit. I don't care about my body. All of these, all of these uh, ideas where you concentrate on one and ignore the others, all of this, they never bring a perfect state. Including the position that some Christians have taken, where they focus only on the spirit, and then they say, the other two are not important. I am born again. My life is, my spiritual life is important. That's all. My body doesn't matter. My mind doesn't matter. As long as my spiritual life is fine. No, it's not fine. Wholeness is where all of these three have been given the due attention that they require. All of these three are working well. All of these three are working in unison, in harmony or agreement. All of them perfectly functioning well. If you do that, that's what gives you the best of results. Let me give you a few examples. Now, remember, today is an introduction, isn't it? Yes. For example, let's look at your mind, okay? Let's look at your mind, for example. One may say, I mean your soul, isn't it? And part of it is the mind, the emotions, the will, okay? But let's look at that soul. If your soul is not functioning well, does it disturb your body? Does it disturb your spirit? Emphatically, yes. If there is no wholeness, in your mind, and you're not taking good care of your mind, and you allow that your mind becomes a harbor, your mind becomes, becomes a place where the devil is just playing with, you are not conscious, and you are not sensitive, you don't care about what goes into your mind, you don't care about what is seated, settled in your mind, you just allow anything to enter and then exit. You just allow your mind to be disquieted. You don't take good care of it. I'll tell you, it affects your spirit. It also affects your body. You would see, 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 and verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 and verse 4. That your neighbor is a system. And all these three must be working together properly. So take care of all of them. Yes. Of course, I haven't come to what is the most important of these three. That's another story. The most important is the spirit. But I'm still saying that all of them must still be taken care of. You can't take care of the others and they leave out the others. No. You know, you know, study about this man. I'm going to read this, but just so that I don't forget. Study about this man, Jack Cole. Jack Cole was one of the great men of God. Actually, he's in that book, the, the book of uh, uh, God's generals. He is one of the God's generals in that book. He was a very great man of God. The man did so many great things. But he died at a young age, about, I think, 30, 36, if not 39, somewhere around there. But he died in his 30s. And before he died, it is claimed by a certain prophet that the Lord had given him a message. And he had taken it to Jacko and said, Jacko, the Lord says to you, you are not taking care of your body. 
and the man died a very fat man. He weighed, I don't know, 90 pounds plus. He was very fat, fat man of God. No, this, this is not popular, but fat man of God. Very fat. And you would come to times where you'd sit down and be laying hands on the sick. Yes, the sick would get healed. But it didn't take a long time before he died. He's one of the, the, the great men of God that lived in ministry for a very short time. Because he wasn't taking care of his, spirit, of his physical life. The man was eating chocolate and a lot of chocolate. Just eating anyhow. And therefore just getting fat. You, you see, most of the times you are thinking that, no, the fact that I am praying then the prayer is going to sort out the fat content. No, not exactly. Every part has got its own part. Take good care of yourself. The same way, there is a mind. I, I think I'm going to come to it. There are those that don't take care of the mind. So they just allow anything to come into their mind and then it disquietens them. And then, without knowing it, they are depressed, they are stressed, they are confused. And all of this, in that confusion, you disturb your spirit, you disturb your body. Do you know that there are many sicknesses that come because of the way you are thinking in your mind? One of them is stroke. Do you know that most of the times, the people that have BP and later on leads to stroke is because of so much thinking. I went to minister to a certain, to a certain man. I think that was Adventist Hospital. He was in intensive care unit. And I went to minister to him. And I prayed for him. As I prayed for him, the Lord told me something. He says, Tell him he's thinking too much. And because he's thinking too much, that's why he's in this state. And I told him, I said, sir, you are thinking too much. That's why you are the way you are. You are thinking too much. Yes, he said, yes, I am really thinking a lot. Things are not working. But I, I told him, but if you continue like this, you will die. That's what the Lord is saying. Even me, coming with the anointing of God. I can't now help you. I can help you, yes. But the advice still remains. Don't think too much, especially the way you're thinking. If you can't continue like this, and then you didn't take heed to it and suffered the consequences. You know, you must be able to control what is in your mind. Are you listening? People, some people get BP at the age of 17. And you ask them, what have you been thinking about at the age of 17? A fellow teenager broke up with them. And I'm telling you, you may think that these things don't happen. There was a particular day, I think it was a healing service. As I ministered, I talked about a young girl that was depressed and all of this. You remember? It was in a healing program. But I, I, I spoke a word of knowledge about a young girl that was in depression and I explained her case. Soon after the service, she came to meet me. Young girl. And said, Pastor, in the service you called out my case. And it's me and then explained. I said, how old are you? She said, I'm 12 years old. And I've suffered depression for the past two years. I said, at 12 years old, you are already participating. You are a paid-up member of Depression Club. So you see, you, as, as much as you may think that this is for certain big people, people that have suffered in life over many years, uh -uh. and depression kills many people, kills many people. Are you listening? I want to balance all of this, okay? As I said, there are some that feel they are taking good care of them, of themselves, just because of prayer and study of the word. That is good, and that's the most important. But don't ignore the others. Don't ignore the others. 
there's also a certain man of God. Hmm. Uh, this young man of God, he also died young. Okay, I'm not going to name him for you. There was also this other uh, young, young man of God. I think his name is Robert. Robert. Uh, those of you that study, you have never met this person. Robert. Mm-hmm. Do I have an answer here? Robert Gondwe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, but his name is Robert. So, this, this man of God, he also did a lot of amazing things. Then later on in his life, first of all, he would experience the death of his wife. And in number two, he would also experience a lot of attacks. People would write a lot about him, criticizing him and all of that. And him, without knowing the simple things, the man had so journeyed with God, the man had so done great things. But as people wrote against him in newspapers, he kept on reading each one of them. He read about this one, read about this. People accused him falsely. He read about it and all of this. Before he knew it, the man of God suffered from depression. Man of God, depression. Taken out of ministry, put at home to be taken care of. And they resuscitated him for about three years. What do you call those? Uh, where, where they put someone like that that has been maybe smoking marijuana or something? What do you call that? That process? Rehabilitation. The man of God, with the Holy Ghost inside of him, both of them rehabilitated for some years. What happened? Because of not controlling the mind. Brothers and sisters, you will notice something. You will notice something. Have you noticed that when people are speaking against me or whatever, I will neither participate nor will I give it an ear. Actually, I don't think that any one of you has ever seen me inter- encouraging you to tell me when people are speaking about me. I like to say when people are speaking about me, don't tell me. Like peace. Peace. Yeah, peace. When people are talking about me, I, I haven't heard. Let me be walking in peace. I haven't heard. In courts, what you do not know does not exist. So you just keep on. <laughs> hey! but, but the problem with some of you, whoever has spoken, you want to hear. And you want to hear the rest of the story. What else did they say? And then you hear the rest of the story. And then you want to hear more. I'm going to call the person. And then you call them and meet them. And then you tell them, repeat what you said. You want to hear it again. And then they, they say it. And then you even have time to ask them questions. Eh? What did you say there? And then they say it. They say it. By the end of the day, you know what you are thinking? You are thinking you are a robot. That will hear and forget the mind doesn't work that way. You hear, you won't forget. You have to process it. You may process it the whole night. You may dream on it. Tomorrow morning, you wake up on it. And if you don't know how to control your mind, you keep thinking about it. Over time, that's how people get frustrated. Some things, just leave you. Let them go. Someone says, you, you are ugly. Just say, thank you. Move on. I remember some years ago, someone ever told me something. Right in this ministry, they ever said, Pastor this. I think the person was angry. I was rebuking him for what he was doing. So he got angry and said this. And he said it, I said, I am sure that's a slip of the tongue. You didn't mean it. And I, I, I left so that he shouldn't repeat it. So I considered the first statement a slip of the tongue. I guard my heart. I guard my That's why you have always seen me at peace. Have you noticed that? But some people, including other people's problems, do you even know that other people's problems can easily become your problems? There are two categories of people. 
There are some that explain their problems so that they can be great. Then there are some that explain their problems so that they can capture everyone else into their problems. The two are different. I know of a story where someone wanted to jump from the top of a building. They wanted to jump from there. Then they came another one. I said, stop. Don't jump. Don't jump. Don't jump. And the person said, no, I want to kill myself. The person said, no, let me just speak to you. Let me just come and talk to you. After talking with that person and that person explaining the problems, two people died. <laughs> After explaining the problem, both of them, they now jumped and killed themselves. You see, some people are like that. It's not that they want to be helped. Uh-uh. They don't want to be helped. They just want to be distributing their problem to everyone else. Guard your heart. Are you listening? Guard your heart. There are some people, when they start explaining their problems, tell them, hey, even me mentally, I am not as strong. Please, sister, leave me where I am. I am missing my own wounds. Can you go to others that do not have wounds or those that can handle such stories? Don't tell me. Things are not well in my family. Say, so, you know what? Hey, 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 hey. Go to others that can handle it. Uh, how did we divert all of this? I, I think I should, I wanted to share with you a scripture. Oh, dear Jesus. What were we talking about? Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter, okay, okay. Oh, ha, <laughs> ah, ah, hey. You know, I think I'm really helping somebody. Some of you are just confusing your mind over very little unnecessary things. 2 Corinthians chapter number. Oh, I, I wanted to give you an example on how these things affect each other, isn't it? I think that's what we're going to. I, I wanted to give an example that if your mind is not in order, your mind can affect your body and your mind can affect your spirit, isn't it? Then also, if your body is not in order, your body can affect your mind. Your body can affect the spirit, your, your spirit. I think that's what I wanted to say. Okay, I think that's where we go to this. I wanted to give you the connection between your mind and your spirit. To the extent that your mind is disturbed, it also disturbs your spirit. Because the Bible shows us this. The Bible says, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image of God, should shine unto them. So he says that the devil would blind the mind. Why? So that the light of the glorious gospel should not shine onto them, onto their hearts, their spirits. So the devil knows that there is a connection between your mind and your spirit. If your mind is blocked, the word cannot enter your spirit. That's why at any time that you are disturbed mentally, your spiritual life can easily face a choke. You don't come to the service while thinking about too many things, thinking carelessly, and you are in the service. As you are listening and you're thinking about so many things, you will find out when you go out, your take home of scriptures will be much lower. You will also find out the impact of the service will be much lower. Because God will be, in a sense, failing to get to your spirit. Because to get to your spirit, God has to also minister first to your mind. What you hear with your mind, then you allow into your spirit. That's what brings light to your spirit. Are you listening? So your mind is very important. Don't just allow anything to come into your mind and then disquieting you in your mind. You are so disturbed in your mind. You are not at peace in your mind. And Apostle Paul tells us a solution on doing that. One of it amongst the several that I'll be sharing with you over the weeks. So what I'll be doing over the weeks, some days I'll just come and, and talk more about the mind. One day I'll come talk more about the body. Then I'll also come and talk more about the spirit. Because your spirit can also be sickly. Hmm? 
et cycle spirit in quotes eh? a cycle spirit as in where your spiritual life is not going well it also affects your body it also affects your uh, your mind if we have time I'll, I'll show you one scripture in that line okay but let's talk about the mind first Philippians chapter number four Tell your neighbor, neighbor, reduce, I, I mean, refuse depression. Tell them, don't think too much unless you are thinking in a positive sense. Mm. Philippians 4, verse 11. You know that there, there's a difference between thinking in a positive way, which is actually productive thinking, and thinking which is negative, a, a negative, uh, thinking in the negative way. The negative way of thinking is actually called worry. Where you are worried or you are anxious, you're just thinking about, mm -hmm, but my life, mm -hmm, how will things, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, if my friend was there, mm -hmm, if my mother was there, mm -hmm, where was my mother buried? Mm -hmm, she was buried in 1994. Mm -hmm, if my mother was there, uh, mm, or at least my brother, if my brother was there. Uh, mm, but, but, uh, I wish I went to St. Andrew's Primary School. I wouldn't have been like this. Uh, mm, but I wish I didn't make that mistake in primary school. Mm, mm. Such thinking, by the end of it, by the end of it, you are doing something to your body. You are doing something to your spirit without you knowing. Without you knowing. Remember, this mind is a door to your spirit. As the word comes, as the light of God's word comes, it passes through that mind into your spirit. The same way, the more that you are thinking all of these things, without you knowing it, they would also enter into your spirit. And then they contaminate your spirit. So don't just make anything to enter in. Are you listening? Okay, that's what I want to show you from, from Philippians chapter number 4. Verse 11. The Bible says, Philippians chapter 4 verse 11. The Bible says, not that I speak. Now, you see, sometimes when we say we want to talk about healing, health, and wholeness, people are always thinking about we're going to cast out devils and Yes, there's a part of that. But some devils are, are man-made. So I'm first dealing with the man-made devils. Things that you can easily control. You see, that's why I'm saying sometimes we're... <laughs> give or attach to something the right amount of... Uh, if it is a spiritual thing the right amount of spiritual substance. But never exaggerate something beyond its level of a particular importance or a particular attachment. In other words, there are certain things that are spiritual. Deal with them the spiritual way. Then there are certain things that maybe are not spiritual. Deal with them that way. That's the way to operate in life. You are eating fish, they are bones. I hear that you're not supposed to say thorns. I hear it's bones. Is that correct? A fish does not have thorns. It has bones. I, I don't know if I'm right, but, but I read that. He, am I correct? <laughs> oh, you don't know. Minga, that's what you know. Uh, no. Though those are bones of a fish. But what I wanted to say is, the bones of a fish, as you're eating, you're supposed to remove them. You are being wise by removing them. Another, instead of removing them, takes a fish. Man, taka baba, jaka, tere baba. Le baba, baba, I extract the bones. Masaka la baba, baba, You see, that's now operating in a disorderly way. And that's what has gotten many people to a lot of problems. And many Christians are good at that. 
some would even replace prayer. They, they would replace hard work with prayer. I know a certain student that was withdrawn from uh, Chancellor College back in those years when we were in school. We really laughed. Like me, I laughed. I laughed it off. I, I'm not even ashamed to laugh again. The guy, because this is stupidity, the guy had exams. He thought to go to the mountain and download everything and pass in the mountain. He prayed the whole night and went straight from the mountain, fresh with the power of the Holy Ghost. He wasn't studying. He was just praying and praying and prayed the whole night, charged himself up with the power of the Holy Ghost, went to the exam, sealed everything, was withdrawn and widowed. Me, I laughed. Because you see, yeah, so for such people, don't feel sorry, just laugh. Is acting in a strange way. Everything has its place. Are you listening? Who told you that you should take your exam paper and just shaka ba 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 ba? Yeah. I insist answers by the power of the Holy Ghost. I take the pain in my spirit and the ink of the Holy Ghost. An angel is writing for me. Let's not be weird. Are you there? Tell them, I never don't be weird. Don't be strange. Everything has its part. Mm. So, Philippians chapter number 4, verse 11. So, oh, what I was talking about, I was talking about productive thinking. So, I was saying that there is one way that... It's, it's the unproductive one. It's where you are just worried and you're just thinking about those things in the negative sense and in all of that. That's not helpful. The helpful one is at least where you are seeking for solutions. You're asking yourself, what should I do? And then you're thinking through what you should do. And I'll tell you something. Where you don't have an answer, don't allow your mind to also switch off to the unproductive thinking. Where you don't have an answer, you leave it and say, okay, I'm going to come to it another time. Your mind keeps on thinking about it. But your attitude must be, I want to find a solution. Are you there? Not just entertaining worry. And the Bible tells us something here. He says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. So this is something that you learn. This is something you can teach yourself. He says, I have learned. In whatever state I am, there with to be what? Content. He says, I have learned. This is what you call productive building of your mind. Productive training of your mind. He says, I have learned. In whatever state I am, there within that particular state, whether a good state, a bad state, but I have learned to be content. Let's put it in the Amplified Bible. Verse 11 into verse 12. The Bible says, not that I am implying that, okay. it says, not that I am implying that I was in any personal want, for I have learned how to be content. Now, look at what he means by content. He says, to be satisfied, to be satisfied to the point where I am not or disquieted in whatever state I am. He says, to the point where I am not disturbed, I refuse to be disturbed. Are you listening? He says, where you are not disturbed. Something has happened, yes, but what, what else? Refuse to be disturbed. He says, to the point where I'm not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I am. Verse 12. Verse 12 says, I know how to be abased and live humbly in straitened circumstances. And I know also how to enjoy plenty 
and live in abundance. He says, I know how to have little. I also know how to have much. I have, he says, I have learned in any and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation, whether well fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare or going without food or being in want. He, he, what he's saying is, he says, I have learned, I have trained myself. No matter what is happening, I will not be disturbed. I will not allow my mind to wander left and right, complain over this, complain over that. Ah, uh ah. -uh. He says, I have learned. That's what we call mental wellness. Where you train yourself that if that day you don't have money, you are still going to have a good day. Your good day is not based on money or no money. You have lesser money, you still enjoy your day. You have a lot of money, you still enjoy your day. You are not worried in any way. Yes, people attack you. And the Bible tells us so. It says, no weapon fashion against you shall prosper. But that also shows us that weapons do come. The weapons come. But you are still not disturbed. You are at peace. Are, are you listening? And I'm telling you, peace of mind is one of the greatest threats in the 21st century. You know that there are so many things in this 21st century that can disturb the peace of your mind? And actually, scientifically, it has been proven that many sicknesses that people, are, people suffer with in this 21st century are connected to the activities of their mind. Where people just constantly get worried and they grumble over everything, complain over everything, and there are enough things to make you complain in this life. Even the things that are going well, you can also find reason to complain about them. You wanted seven children. No one forced you. After the seven children, you are now complaining of school fees. Who, who shall pay for their school fees? Who was giving birth to the seven? You see? So just thank God for the football team you have and enjoy it every day. Enjoy it every day. Have your top 11 and then have your substitutes in the family. Enjoy it. Are you listening? Someone said, I wish I studied, uh, I wish I studied engineering. So what did you study? I studied education. Doesn't matter. Just enjoy it. Or if you want, later on, go study that which you wanted to study. I know a certain old man that took his degree at the age of 84. Right here in Malawi, it happened in his region. Why did he get the degree? He wasn't to get the degree so that he could find a job or whatever. He said he had always wanted to, 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 to have a degree before his death. So it was his quest. He said, before I die, I must still get the degree. And the man pushed and pushed at the age of 84. He had his degree. Yeah. You know? But that must never be something to be worried about. Are you listening? And why I was saying... Why are you saying that the health of your mind is connected to your body? Look at it from Third Peter, Third John, Third John one, Third John one. Say with me, I refuse to worry. Say it again out loud. I refuse to worry, and I refuse to talk worry. And you know, we we're, were just discussing with Pastor M a few days ago that, do you know that the, the way that our mind, the way that people wire their minds is that no matter how good something is, they will still find something to complain about it over time. There are some ladies, the way they complain of their husbands, after they talk of their husbands, in my heart, I just say, mm -hmm. if I just borrowed you a sitting husband of, <laughs> of 
of another lady that complained. And we said, okay, let's take out your husband. Let's give you this shoes for one week. You know, you would go back to your husband and say, I, I don't know what I was doing. You know, people generally complain over everything. Like over everything. You have got, you, you, you are the one that always wanted to get married. You got married. You are now picking one problem after another with that wife. My wife, my wife doesn't answer the phone the same time. Sometimes you can call twice. You call, it will ring, it will cut. You have to call again. And that's what you're complaining over. Why not just enjoy your wife that way? That is the wife that the first time you are calling, don't even bother to put the phone at, at your ear. Just put it somewhere. This is a wife that will dial one try whilst you are working on your laptop. You know that the second time, that's when she asks. Why not just make fun of it and enjoy it? He calls me at night. Why not enjoy it? There are some that are willing to be called at night. They haven't been called at night. The last time they were called at night, they called themselves. Why worry? You remember what Jesus said? Jesus told, told, told Martha, he says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and careful about too many things, isn't it? Said one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that thing. You are worried about too many things, and that's the state of man. Worried, complaining about too many things. By now, I could have been the youngest millionaire. But you, you can still be the youngest millionaire by simply. Choosing a sample size. Where you are 50, don't bring other 50 people into there. You bring a few that are 70, 80, and in those, then you are 10 of you. Among them, you are the youngest. Among them, you are the young millionaire. And then you are happy about it, and you continue on with life. Glory to God. Yeah. Don't be too hard on yourself. Are you listening? It's very hard. It's very toxic to your spirit. Even your study of the Bible doesn't work well when, when your mind is going left and right because of so many things. You know that? Have you ever heard that someone wanted to kill themselves after an encounter with God in prayer? They were praying and praying. The Holy Ghost came upon them and then they wanted to commit suicide. Have you ever heard that before? But how many have you heard? That certain things that were happening, they thought about them, they thought about them, and then finally, they wanted to take their life. And for me, I have talked to many people over the years. I want to take my life back. I wanted to kill myself. And I would always ask them out, because I wanted to really understand what causes people to come to a point where they can take their own life and even forget they are Christians. Someone that was in Christ. You should have just waited to die and then you go to heaven. You decide to take your life and you change venues to hell now. Because you can't commit suicide and find yourself in heaven. Automatically, you are buying the wrong ticket to another place. Why don't you commit suicide? Pastor, I've been thinking a lot. What have you been thinking about? Things are not working. Okay, what things are not working? I wanted... Then I wanted, then I wanted, then I wanted. And many times, the things that cause people to kill themselves, they are relationship related. That's what I found out. Relationship related, marriage related. These are one of the key things that make people to take their life out. You want Tamek? Why do you want Tamek? My husband is cheating. Your husband cheating and you taking Tamek. Are these two adding up? Because after you take Tamek, he will cry for your life. Then he will now marry one of those that he was cheating with. 
So have you gained anything? And then in hell, look, look, look at the bad part. In hell, you will be seeing them have fun. And that's what will happen. You will now be in hell and you'll be seeing them have fun. Ah. The scripture I, I showed the, the people in the morning says, in hell, it's possible to see people in the earth. So you now are in hell, burning. Ah. And then you are seeing your husband married another one and you are burning in hell. Then before they die, they both repent. They repent, get saved. They have a, they have a lovely house. <laughs> you are even now seeing them in church. They are coming as husband and wife after you have died and you are in hell. Shaka Then they die. They go to heaven. You, you are in hell. The victim has been victimized. Have you seen that? The victim has again been what? Victimized. Double victimization. Control your mind. Are you listening? Control your mind. And I'm telling you, this world has got so many things that can disturb your mind. Control your mind. Control what you read. And, and another thing. Mm -hmm. It's fine. We're going to come to this. Another thing that, as I say, I like to read. Okay, Reading, I find reading very good. One of the things that I also notice, actually, it's, it's, it's in one of, no, not even just one of the papers, but many papers. You can, you can read on it. They have said that one of the things that now is causing a lot of depression in many people is comparisons that comes out of social media. They are saying that someone rationalizes as they go to social media and they say, you see, I'm just going to look at a few pictures and blah, blah, blah. What does, what does it hurt? Does it hurt just to look at a few pictures? But they say that whatever picture you look at for about four seconds or something without you being careful, it immediately makes you to compare yourself against those people unknowingly. So you see someone has taken a photo on a swimming pool. Immediately you begin to ask yourself, so our friends are having swimming pools. When we are not having swimming pools, I always thought I'm a success. And that person seems younger than me. And then blah, 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 blah. And then if he has got swimming pool, that means he has got everything else. And you see, what you, are, what you don't know and what you haven't asked is, is that swimming pool his? Is it his house? You'd find out it is at his uncle's place. Do you know that there are some people that are simply staying with rich uncles? Come on, talk to me. There are some of you. Hey, hey, hey. Let me give an advice to some of you. In this life, there are some of you that will almost start life like me. Our parents gave us a good uh, platform to do school, whatever. But the only inheritance we got from there on, as I think for me, I think I got some spoons and cups. And yes, when I was going to become a bachelor, my, I think my mother gave me a knife. I think a spoon, some spoons, the few things. Okay. That's what I remember I took. Then you start life. Are, are you following? Then you start life and you build. Whatever you are having, you have earned it. Some won't start life like that. As they are starting life, their parents will buy them a house. This house, my daughter, enter therein. Your man, enter within the same house. Wedding, what's the budget? Three million. The parents contribute 2.8 million. You, how much will you contribute? 200,000. And then they allow you to contribute the 200,000. And then you haven't managed, you have contributed 70. Then they come and they help you with 120. And you, you, you don't have such privileges in life. 
And those are the people that you are, comp you are competing with. It's better to do your own wedding with a 500,000 kwacha. Do it. Be happy. Are you going to be half married? Nada. Will your, will your wedding end in the middle? Could it? Zimene mwari pira, tingo tena pa wedding cake up. The wedding goes up to the end, isn't it? Yeah. Honeymoon. Whether you honeymoon, you go to Vumbwe, doesn't matter. It's still honeymoon. Isn't it? But, but you see, a lot of you, even I'll tell you, and this is so real. Even me as a pastor, I have had to talk to some people getting married. They just getting frustrated. Pastor, my, this man is not doing this. This man is supposed to. Pastor, pray for us. And you ask him, what do you want? What is remaining on the budget? Pastor, what is remaining is water. And some of you even come to ask me for money. Pastor, add to our wedding budget money. And I'll say, what is remaining? We want to put our faces on a boat of water. In my heart, I just say, we'll say even water at our wedding. Ah, ah, hey! Ah. My wedding was that one where you come to eat and the food is, you, you know those old weddings, where the food would not be enough. So if you haven't gotten the food, at least get the bottle of, of Fanta. You, you know those ones. And then someone wants me to put their faces on a bottle of water. Don't be too hard on yourself. You just come. Other people go, go someplace and then they take all these photos and then you, you are looking at it and say, hey, hey, I wish it was me. I wish I was also married to, the, to a man like that. And this is a pressure on your life. Many, many people, the life they live on social media is not the life they live every day. Actually, it's not even a life they live. It's a life they just want to show you. Are you there? It's a life they just want to show you. And you, you are busy losing your peace because of someone's internet. And you see, the more you look at people's status, it's the more you are putting yourself at a risk. You know that? I have found a new job. Hey. I have now discovered everyone needs their own house. You are looking at it. <laughs> The one that doesn't stay at his own house is a witchcraft. He's a witch doctor. And you are looking at his. So as we are practicing witchcraft, you go to a wedding. How many Aliban cars in the city? You know, this life can just put you at unnecessary pressure. Don't tolerate it. Are you listening? Yes. That's, that's for your mental well-being. If your mind is at peace, I'll tell you, it's very easy to engage in spiritual things. Very easy. That's what I've also learned. Even prayer. Prayer is very easy to engage in it very well when your mind is at peace. When your mind is going left and right and then you're praying, shaka taraba, like a Without you knowing it, you start to sway towards that side. That's where you now pray dangerous prayers of, Lord, punish that person. The person I saw on social media, kill, Lord, kill. And the Lord is asking you, hey, Lord, you are the avenger. And then tomorrow you see they have died. You say, bless be God. Read this for me, one to go. All right, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. The Bible says, Beloved, 
I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in what? Health. Okay. Does it put a full stop? And be in health. Then it says, even as thy soul, what? Prospereth. What is he saying? He's saying that if your soul prospers, there are two things that will follow after your soul prospers. Number one, you will prosper. Number two, you will be in health as thy soul prospers. If your mind is not in well-being, prosperity is disturbed, your physical health is also disturbed. He says, even as your soul prospers, one of the things that you should work on is the peace of your mind. Are you listening? With a mind that is at peace, you also think about finances very well. You know that? I'll tell you something. I'm a very good thinker. I'm a very good thinker. And one of the things that helps me to think is because my mind is ever at rest. So because my mind is at rest, I can think many things. I can think things that, as I'm, even as I'm doing them, people may not understand that this can be done. And I would, I would think over it and do it, and people would be wondering that it cannot be done. Maybe it cannot be done. But I have thought it through. I have seen it in my mind. Why? My mind is not contaminated. Later on, when it's done, people say, this can only be that the Holy Ghost did this. But sometimes it's just that your mind is clear, your mind is good, it's not contaminated, it's not hampered by a lot of sins. It, there's no a lot of wastage or garbage in the mind. He says, even as I saw it, prospereth. Uh -huh. Let's read on and finish. Verse 3. Verse 3 says, For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. He says, I was so happy when I heard that the truth of God is in you. Remember, he's talking about as thy soul prospereth. So he says, I was happy when the truth of God's word was in you. Then he says, verse 4, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. In other words, my children walk in the word of God. They walk in the light of God's word. Because you are walking in the light of God's word. Your mind is renewed. Your mind is all, only keeping your, God's word. And you're enjoying the peace that comes from God's word. He says, uh, Apostle John says, I want you to prosper and I also want you to be in health. But I've got no doubt that this will happen. Why I don't have any doubt that this will happen is because I know the state of your mind. I know the state of your mind. The state of your mind is a mind that you have kept so well with the word of God. It's a state of mind that you, that you, have, you have caged it against all things that can intoxicate the mind. You are properly guarding your mind with the word of the truth, the word of God. He says, with this, I know that you can easily prosper, you can easily be in health. Are you following? And the other thing on the mind, I think due to time, maybe let's just finish with the mind. What I'd want you to share on, on how your spirit connects to the rest of you. I think that one is very key. That one, let's look at it next week. But right on your mind, look at another thing. Isaiah 33. Isaiah 33. Tell your neighbor one more time. Neighbor, guard your mind. Guard what enters into your mind. Hmm. Actually, you know, there are some times that anything can enter into the mind, but what remains there is what you can control, isn't it? Someone can throw thoughts into your mind, but kick them out. Kick them out. 
If those things must not remain there, kick them out. Let's look at the certain scripture. Just remember it. Philippians chapter number 4, verse 8. Philippians chapter number 4 and verse 8. The Bible says, finally, brethren. Philippians 4 verse 8. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. He says, think on these things. In other words, you're going to tell yourself that if I'm going to think about something, it must qualify under here. Whatever is rubbish, I will not think on it. Because it's only bad to your health. I think my employer is not paying me enough. Are you sure that is pure? Is that thinking in a pure way? Talk to me. What do you think? Is that thinking in a pure way? I think he's not paying me enough. <laughs> did you see what happened? Sometimes I follow these things. You see, do you see what happened when they announced that tax, that uh, the tax band, they're going, to ra they're going to raise it, that uh, up to the first 100,000, you won't pay tax. People celebrated it. Did you notice? People were so happy. Then, as once they celebrated, they learned another thing, that minimum wage has been increased. Those that were getting lower than that, they were so happy. Then, those ones that celebrated their 100,000, they remembered that they have got houseboys, maids, and all of those. So, they, have now, they are now hearing. We will be paying housemaid 50,000, then garden boy 50,000, then guard 50,000. Hey, hey, the way people commented on it on social media, stupid. Then I'll just become the housemaid myself and all of this. And I think it's Pastor Emma or someone forwarded me something. Someone that was so angry and said, I don't even understand why we should pay them at all. These people, we leave them at home. They take our remote and watch DSTV. When we are at work, they are watching DSTV. They eat our food. Even when we buy cellulite for the children, they eat also. They must be paying us. Look at such anger. Are those pure thoughts? No, don't waste your time thinking about those things. The way my father abandoned me. It's fine, he abandoned. Was it a good thing? No, it wasn't. But you're thinking about it now at the age of 40. What value did that to you? Finally, brethren, le, le, let's, le, are you able to see it on the screen? I think as we are closing on thinking, let's read this one again. Read it for me. One, two, go. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 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 Lovely, isn't it? They think about things that are lovely. How could you be thinking to revenge against someone? Who does she think she is? I will show him. Is that lovely? 
my neighbor, the way he raises the volume of the radio. And whenever they cook fish, they come cook it outside next to the fence. Are those lovely thoughts? They must leave him so that I must take him. Are those lovely thoughts? No, they are not. He says, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, any excellence, if there be any praise, these things, these type of things, he says, think on these things. Glory to God. Glory to God. You're going to sanitize your mind, isn't it? Mm. Make sure you sanitize your mind in such a way. Don't just allow anything to enter into your, into your mind. Let it meet a, a, a mind mask. We are used to a face mask. I said mind mask. Are you there? Then also, look at this, Isaiah chapter 33, verse 24. Isaiah chapter number 33, verse 24. The other thing about, the other thing about your mind is that, listen and listen well. The other thing about your mind is that your mind is also the center that controls the parts of your body. Okay? So, what you also allow in your mind, or the way you think in your mind, can easily control this or the faculties of your body. And the Bible shows us, read this for me, want to go? Uh-huh. He says, the inhabitants shall not say what? The inhabitants shall not say, shall not say, I am sick. Which part of your body says? It's your mouth, isn't it? But can your mind ever say, can your mouth ever say it, except the mind has told the mouth to say it? It's, it's facing your mind, isn't it? If it goes to your mind, then your mind tells the mouth to say that's the other critical part of your mind. When, once you allow literally just anything in your mind, and then your mind begins to regulate the mouth to say, and the mouth is just saying according to, to what the mind is thinking, by and by, you also now introduce things into your body. Because the Bible says, the power of life and death is in the tongue. And they that eat it... They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs 18, verse 21. So, the power of life and death is in your tongue, it's in your mouth. What you speak, the things that you speak are the things that you see. And yet, the mouth doesn't decide on its own what to say. Whatever the mind says is out of what the mind has already thought about. So, when the mind thinks something, it instructs the mouth to say it. And once the mouth says it, the mouth has got the power. It prophesies it into being. And because your mouth is also connected to your spirit, whatever you prophesy, even though your spirit may be uncomfortable with it, and I'll tell you, this is what happens. When you say something by the wayside, as in you say something contrary, your spirit does not automatically or at the same time give into it. Your spirit will often take the position that probably it's just a slip of the tongue. Probably you or she will think about it and will reverse the statement. But when your spirit says that this person has kept on saying it, has kept on saying it, keeps on saying it, it comes to the level where your spirit now must embrace that which you are saying. And make sure that whatever happens is in line with what your mind has decided and with what your mouth has stated, has declared. And the more you are saying, I'll be sick, I'll be sick, I'll be sick, I'll be sick, your spirit will stand it, will, stand, will withstand it. But there comes a point 
when your spirit gets in and says, okay, fine. Let it be according to the way that he wants it. And then you find out you're facing those consequences. That's why you see I told you about the, the things that you say. Don't entertain certain jokes that you, you think is a joke, but in the realm of the spirit, there are no jokes. <laughs> Have you ever seen the devil attack you and then say, pa, it's a joke, it's a joke. Have you ever seen like that, something like that? The devil told you it's a joke, it's a joke. Satan oppressed someone and then finally said, it's a joke, it's a joke. There are no jokes in the realm of the spirit. This, this way of, of talking, where people just say, I have fainted. You know the Kishore one, eh? Hey, Nagomoka. Hey. You know? This thing has made me laugh until I fainted. You see, as you are saying that every day, I have fainted. I have fainted. Nagomoka. Hey, Nagomoka. Nagomoka. At first, your spirit detects it and says, no, this person doesn't mean it. This person doesn't mean it. He or she will reverse it. The more you keep saying it, your spirit comes to a level where your spirit begins to now slowly accept it. Begins to slowly accept it. Then, it comes to a particular time when your spirit says, okay, the person has said it for long enough. Let it be the way that the person wants it. And then that's where it happens. And because of that, the devil already has that system in place because the devil knows it. When any pandemic comes in, even COVID, you know what the devil has been doing? He's making you to slowly accept the situation. I know most of you, when it came, when it started, I know the way you used to speak. Kayaba, it has got no power over me. Kayababa, I bind, I cut it off. Remember that time when Pastor Chris talked about I cut it off? Hey, it was everywhere. I cut it off. It is dead. Hey. Slow, slow by slow. <laughs> people have started accepting it by and by. To the extent that people have now embraced it in their vocabulary. In their vocabulary. You see, they are, they are what? They are accepting it. Where? Into their vocabulary. You know, what is your mind doing? Your mind is accepting it, isn't it? And your mind is the door to your spirit. When your mind accepts it long enough, it starts to be spoken. Remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks it. If your mind accepts it, your mind starts to speak it. When your mind speaks it long enough, then the day they will tell you you have got COVID-19, you just laugh about it. <laughs> Dirty fat, you are now also what? Speaking it. You see? You are now declaring it. And then suddenly you die. Many people that died young, many people that died young, trust their speaking. They spoke their own death. Many of them. Many of them. I know someone in my teenage years or my early 20s. From nowhere, he just started saying, you know, I will die. I may die. I will die. And then he would go on the road and sleep there. Someone kill me. You know, like that. He did that for about one week. The other week, he was on a motorbike. And Suddenly, a car just came, hit the, the motorbike, died on the spot. And then people said, ah, he, he was talking about death. He knew. No, no, no. You see, I've got a very big problem with those that say, that say he knew he would die. He didn't know he would die. Let's break it deliberately. He didn't knew that he would die. This guy has spoken oneself in to death. Not that he knew he would die. And those of you that are slightly older, you also know that song. 
Ndika zango dene, azandi kuirira. He, ho, ha. You still remember that song? Ndika zango kuera minibasi. Hey, hey. And it was a very famous song. How many months did it take for the person to die? You can't sing that song. In the studio, you can't sing that song. And you are singing the song of death. Didn't take time. The guy died. What did people say? He knew he would die. No, he did not know. The guy spoke his own death. Be careful what you're speaking. You can easily speak your own sickness. But hey, come on. Remember, I'm going to say, Nene, Paban. Is. You have fibroids. You, are, you have started to produce the words. By and by, one year later, they find with fibroids. And then, hey. This may be BP. They won't seem to be BP. But because you have started speaking, this may be BP. That's why, even this, past animals in Komoke. And, and people just, no, wait. It's fine if another said it. Let it be their business. But now, people also now took it. And everyone just saying, hey, pass any in Komoka. Hey, hey, pass any in Komoka. And then, you see someone is fainting. And you can't even connect. Let me finish with this. Let me finish with this. In, I think it was in Nigeria, a certain witch doctor was interviewed and the witch doctor was asked that when you want to help someone to kill another person, what do you do? So this witch doctor says, I bring that person, I do my magic, I do whatever, whatever. Then I tell that person that the whole night he should be speaking the death of that person. Something like, you are dying, you are dying, you are dying. He should speak it the whole night. And the person, the next day or over a few days, the person would die. Then he was answered, okay, what if he changed his mind about having that other person die? Then he said, it's, it's, it's more difficult to reverse it, but it can be done. It's just that now that person has to take a much, an even much longer time to say the very opposite of what he was saying. So he should be saying, that person has life. He has life. He has life. He has life. And he, he said, if he does it for a long time, in the realm of the spirit, things will change and the person will start to begin to have life. I looked at it and I said, so with which doctors it works? If it can work with such people, and then the Bible has told me to also be speaking that way, why won't I embrace it? Why not I be spending my time speaking, I've got the life of Christ in me. I'm moving forward. The way is at work in me. Things are going well on every side of my life. Glory to God. On my left, things are going well. On my right, they are going mushy. Ah, ah, I am happy. I am happy. I'm going forward. I'm moving forward. Go right, oh God. The same way I can be speaking that to my life, what I'm speaking will happen. Isn't it? That's what you must begin to embrace. Take a lot of time. To speak certain things to your life that you want to happen to your life. You don't even need anybody. You can do it alone in your bedroom. I, I do it alone. Like in my bedroom, I just start talking. I'm moving forward. Glory to God. We are moving forward. Oh boy. We're going to do great things in this nation. Oh, glory to God. I'm, a, I, I'm the light of this world. I'm shining ever more brightly. I'm shining. I'm a solution to this world. I just like that. Everything that we need is there. Money's are coming on every side. They are coming in. They are coming in from this side. We are doing this. We are entering this territory. Glory to God. We have favor on every side. I talk it and talk it and talk it. As you are talking it, so do you see it. Are you there? 
You can also talk about your body. Ah, ah, glory. That, that, that area of your body that always gives you pains. You have always been talking and saying, yeah, this part, it pains. Mm-hmm, it pains. But it's the way we are. It just pains. Somehow, once I sleep on this side, basi. Somehow, basi. And every day you keep on talking. Change your talk and start to say, whatever I eat is fine. I eat pork is fine. I drink sobo is fine. I've got no answers in me. Answers in me never. Allergic to what? Me? No, 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 no. I've got no allergies. I've, I, I, my body does not react to anything. The question is, what if your body is still reacting? Just keep talking what you want to see. My body does not react. My body does not react. My body, when I smell something like perfume, I do not react. Keep talking it. Keep talking it. Before long, all of that will check out. I know what I'm talking about. There was a bro- there's a brother here. He's still, he's still a member here. There's a brother here. These days he likes to simmer like nobody's business. And I think he wants to replace the many years that he wasn't eating in Sima. But when I met him, he, he explained to me, and he used to look thin. Now he's looking now. But that's now also going to the other extreme that I talked about earlier, isn't it? <laughs> but when I met him, when he joined this ministry, he couldn't eat in Sima. So I remember one day I had a chat with him. And he said, hey, Pastor, it's just that I don't eat in Sima. I said, Why? He says, I've got ulcers, you know, when I eat in Sima, it does this. The hospital has said, I said, ah, 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 ah. You are going to start eating in Sima. And I told him, first step, keep talking it. I eat in Sima and nothing happens. I love in Sima, I eat it and nothing happens. I told him to keep talking it. The guy did it. Then he ate in Sima, he experienced some things. He came to the day, Pastor, hey. What I have met, I said, keep at it. Then he ate in Sima again. It stopped. And now in several years, he's eating in Sima properly. Proper, proper. Where are some of you? You are still talking. You know, once it rains, you know, pimples come out. My face reacts to pimples. No, no, no. My, my hair reacts to whatever. My hair cracks. My hair, my skin, my skin. Is sensitive. What? Your skin is sensitive and you keep saying it. You say, my skin is not sensitive. I put Vaseline, perfect. Ambishubaba, perfect. Even if I put sand, perfect. Remember, the power of life and death is where? In the tongue. But that's what people glory over. My skin is sensitive. Hey, my skin is sensitive. I don't use any of this. My skin is sensitive. The more you are saying it, is the more you are declaring it. Is the more your skin becomes sensitive. Glory to God. And you can use the same everywhere else, isn't it? It's not, it's not just about the area of health. You can also use it anywhere else. You can talk about money and say, I will never be broke. Broke me never. Ah, ah. Hey. I think let's try it out. Some of you have been speaking in very, you know, me, I don't have a lot of money. It's just sad. It's just, no, no, no. Can, can you stand up on your feet? I think we told you. I want, I want you to try it out. Say, so I can never be broke. Broke me never. I can never fail. I do not fail. I cannot fail. Fail me never. I cannot be sick. I cannot be sick. I live in health. I walk in health. I enjoy health. The life of God is in me. So where is in me? 
if any poison, if any sickness, if any disease should enter my body, it cannot poison me. It cannot bring me to the sick bed because I don't get sick. The life of Christ is in me. I'm a partaker of the divine nature. Not even COVID-19. Not cancer. Not BP. Not malaria. Nothing. I'm from above. I'm from above. I am higher than all of this. In the name of Jesus. And greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Come on, shout at me. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I've got money. I've got money. Money loves me. Man, hey, no, let me, let me tell you something. Hold on. Hold on. Can, can, can I tell you something? Do you know, those of you that have been a little longer here, you should have known this. You know that this means you didn't have money at first. If, if you were there in the early days, we didn't have a lot of money. No, we didn't. We didn't. But... Early on, I would teach the members things and then would start to declare. That time, maybe the one that would give the most money, maybe would give something like 5,000 kwacha. And I would tell them to declare. Declare, I will give millions. Declare, I will give 5 million at once. Declare, I will give this. I ask them, I would tell them and would declare it and would declare it and would declare it. These days, don't you see? We see it, isn't it? Actually, just before this service, I, at some point I thought about it. I said, but those of you that are on the RKG group, I thought about it and said, but does this group ever go a few hours without seeing someone has given something? Have you also noticed that? You see someone has given something. Someone has given something. And just when you think that, oh, maybe people have stopped, another has given something. Then boom, that giving testimony. Then boom, someone has given something and you say, wow. Then boom, it just goes on like that. But that wasn't always there. I trained myself and I trained the others how to talk. We talk right. Are you listening? We talk right. You don't talk like in a humble way. Many people think it's humbleness. It's not humbleness. It's ignorance going on rampage. It's ignorance going straight to the ditch. The ditch of destruction. Where you want to be like humble. So, TV Ankula Zandalama and Dalama Zot TV Day. If in the fact you don't come, sitting on my name is on church high. Dalama, Diribe, Diribe, what are you declaring? You are, you are declaring that you shouldn't have, isn't it? But what should you be to say? I, 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 I have good money. I've, ooh, ooh, oh, hey, I've good money. Money everywhere. Money on the left, money on the right. Money knows me by name. Money knows me by name. Even if money would come here, it would point me as my friend. You know, you talk that way. Money always comes to me. Weekly, it comes to me. I, th I think that one is the one that took me a bit of time to, to actualize. The one of money should be coming to me every week. Because for a long time, I was used to money should come to you monthly, isn't it? Then I said, uh-uh, money can be coming to you every week. So I started to declare. I said, it took me a longer time, but at least I'm living in it now. You can declare money comes to me every week. And that doesn't mean your employer is paying you every week. Uh -uh. Those are simple channels. The channels don't matter. What matters is the source, and that is God. Money follows me every week. Come on, make some declarations. Let's start with the money related. Make declarations on money. Hallelujah. Hold on. This is the very mistake you make. 
Make declarations on money. Shakla terrible, Santa Rabas and terrible. Le clever. Declarations on money. Not speaking in tongues. Because in speaking in tongues, you may be talking about another area. You know that. Can you declare in English about and you see? Instead of declaring, I've got money. You are actually looking at your neighbor. I've got money. I've got I've got money. I have it. I, I have money. You did so many as this. Can you declare, I have money? Money follows me. Money is coming to me by the power of the Holy Ghost. I've got money on every side. Money on every side. I'm getting richer and richer in the name of Jesus. Then they now declare about health. You declare that you're walking in health in your mind, in your spirit, and in your body. Make declarations. I'm not saying speak in tongues. I'm saying make declarations. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I'm walking in health. Every part of my body, every cell of my body, every I tell every vein, every part of my body is walking in health. Every bone of my body, my back, my legs, my arms, my chest, every part of me, my head, my ears, my eyes, my nose, every part of me, my teeth, every part of me is walking in perfect health. It's walking in perfect health. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm walking in health. I'm walking in health. I am untouchable. No virus, no bacteria, no fungi. Nothing can touch me. Nothing can touch me. In the name of Jesus, I walk in perfect health. I'm healthy every day. The life of God is at work in me. I am healthy in the morning. I am healthy in the evening. I'm healthy in the cold season. I'm healthy in the, in the hot season, in autumn, in spring, in winter, every season. Regardless of the season, I'm fine. Regardless of the season, I'm perfect. In the name of Jesus Christ, I make progress. I make progress. I make progress. In my spirit, in my soul, finally, you declare that you are enjoying peace of mind. Are you there? See, I'm enjoying peace of mind, no room for depression, no room for worry, no room for anxiety. Go ahead and make declarations. I've got the peace of Christ in me. I've got the peace of God in my mind. I've got no time for confusion. I've got no time for depression. I've got no time for stress. Stress me. Never, never, never. I can never be stressed. Never. Man, Takabaya. Never. I can never be stressed. I can never be depressed. I can never be confused. I enjoy the peace of mind. I enjoy peace of mind. I enjoy mental wellness. I enjoy mental wellness. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm enjoying myself every day. I live and enjoy life. I have and enjoy life. My mind is fine. My mind is perfect. It is a door to my spirit. I allow things to enter into my spirit. Whatever is not pure, whatever is not pure, whatever is not lovely, whatever is not just, I don't think about it. I don't think about it. I don't think about it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, ah. Ooh. Glory to God. All right. Has today's service helped you? Okay. So next week, we now start talking about the sickness you know now. Okay.
the activities of the devil, how sickness comes, and all of that. Let's take that into next week. But to, today's introduction, I wanted to really talk about your mind, how you control your mind, and it's very so important. Make sure you regulate what enters in your mind, what you harbor, what you keep in your mind. Make sure you do that. Are you there? Glory to God. You may take your seat. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. First and foremost, I'd like to thank my man of God, Pastor Aubrey, and my risen pastor, Pastor Beatrice. As it was already announced, it's time to give. And if you're giving any kind of seat, you may raise your hands and collect an envelope now. Raise up your hand so that you collect the envelope. May I request you to stand on your feet and pull out your offering. Please stand on your feet and pull out your offering. Speak first few ways to your seat, to your offering. To whatever you're giving for. Let us pray over our offering. And the proceed that I came to lead hand of the Sukari, Tantara Bushi, Katara Mandi, Ribus, Arabashu, Torica, Rita Lama Santa, La de Capran Sonte Ribai, Masha Tarama Sonte, Brusi, Karama Santa, La Bunse Ribayam, La Sutarica Sente Ribayam, Le Cabra Santa, La Basson to Ribaya Caraban, Le Catarabashanta, our seeds, our offering, everything that we're giving up to, oh Lord, is blessed beyond measure. We trust in your God, for you have taught us to give. Thank you for this very opportunity, our oh God. That as we give, our oh God, we're giving into our own bosom. We are all taking your hand on the bush. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So we'll give orderly and we'll start with the first front line. And as we give, once they give, then we'll go to the, uh, the next line. I will give in the baskets that are in front of you. Let us please give orderly. And after we done giving, that's, that also marks the end of the service. Praise the Lord. Worship him, Jesus. 